Okay guys, welcome back. So finally, parallax it is. As of now, we have created a nice welcome screen and a basic navigation from the welcome screen to the in-game screen. It is time to put our lonely hero in a beautiful environment and we'll do just that in this episode of Starting with Starling. Let me start by creating a new class in the objects package and call it Game Background. I'll extend it from Starling Sprite and this is an empty sprite as of now. We'll add it as it is in the in-game screen. So let me create a private variable bg of type game background. We'll add that to the display list in the draw game method. bg is equal to new game background. This dot add child bg. Now our background consists of four different layers. The first and the farthest is sky, then comes the hills layer, then the buildings layer, and finally the nearest, the trees layer. In our case of animation of the background, we'll create an effect called parallax. This basically gives the perception of depth by displacing the objects based on where the source of the view is from. In other words, you see objects displaced differently when viewed from different points based on how far the object is from the vision. Objects that are nearer to the view have a larger displacement and objects farther have a lesser displacement. Let's take a look at a simple explanation of how this works in our scenario. So let's assume this is our canvas or the view of the screen and here will be our vision. And we have four images or layers we'll show. We pick the background or the sky image from the PNG file directly and we'll pick the rest of the elements from the sprite sheet. We need to place them aligned to the bottom of the stage and this is how it will look once we place all the elements. To create the parallax depth in a 2D space where we don't have the z-axis, we need to assume that the sky is the farthest, next comes the hills, then the buildings and finally the trees. First, let's take a look at how the seamless or looped animation is created. We duplicate each element and place it side by side, so the first copy is visible by default and the second is outside the screen area. We move or animate both the copies in the direction intended, which is in our case opposite to hero's direction. Let's not worry about the speed yet, as this is the key to the depth perception. So when we are done moving both the objects to the left by width of the stage, we end up seeing the second copy in the same position where the first copy was in the beginning. Right when we reach this stage, we reset the position of both the copies back to where it was in the beginning, which is first copy visible and second copy out of stage. When this happens in a loop, the viewer doesn't feel any difference in the switch between these images. Visually, it will repeat seamlessly. That's about the movement. Now let's think about the speed or the depth perception, which is the actual parallax effect. Unfortunately, since we are not dealing with 3D, it's not as simple as modifying the z-axis of these objects and moving something called a camera. We don't have a camera, so we end up assuming that the trees, since are almost at the same distance as the hero, move at the same speed as the hero. Then the buildings move at half the speed of trees, and then the hills move at half the speed of the buildings. And finally the sky, since that's the farthest, it moves extremely slowly. So to exaggerate the effect, we'll make that move at least 10 times slower than the speed of hills. I decided on these factors based on how much I wanted to dramatize the depth perception or the hero's flight speed. When we actually move all the elements based on these speed factors, we get the effect we are looking for. It might be a little confusing now since we are seeing elements outside the stage area too. Here's the movement without elements outside the stage area. Now that's seamless and we can also feel the depth of the background in a 2D space. Alright, let's start by embedding the sky background which is the layer 1 in the assets.as. I'll copy and paste this embed code and change the file name to bglayer1.jpg and the property name to bglayer1 with a capital B. 
Now we proceed by creating four different layer objects. So let me create a new class. Call it BG layer and extend it from Starling Sprite. All the four elements we discussed are going to be objects of this class. Since we need two copies of each background element, we'll create two image objects inside this class. Private var image1 of type image. Private var image2 of type image. For ease of understanding, I'll also create a variable that can hold the layer number. Private var underscore layer of type integer. The last variable we'll create will be the value that helps us create the parallax effect. Let's call it underscore parallax. This will be of type number. I'll also create the getters and setters for this variable so I can modify and access this value from outside. I'll make the constructor accept this layer integer layer integer and I'll assign it to the underscore layer property of this class. So this dot underscore layer is equal to layer. Let me create an event listener. This dot add event listener starling dot events dot event dot added to stage on added to stage. I'll create the function. Inside this function, I'll remove this event listener. So I'll copy the same and paste it and change it to remove event listener. I'll now need to initialize these two images we created. But before we do that, we'll need a small condition. This condition helps us to know where to pick the image from. Remember, we picked the sky background directly from the PNG file. So, if underscore layer is equal to 1, then we pick the sky background from the PNG file. So, image 1 is equal to new image assets dot get texture BG layer with a capital B and add the layer number. Image 2 will be the same as image 1. So I'm just going to copy this line and paste it and change this to image 2. Now if the layer number is not 1, so else, we'll have to pick it from the sprite sheet. So image 1 is equal to new image assets dot get atlas dot get texture bg layer with a small b and add layer. I'll copy this line and paste it. Change this to image 2. Before adding these objects to the display list, let's first assign the position of these. So image 1 dot x is equal to 0. We want it to be visible by default. Image 1 dot y is equal to stage dot stage height minus image 1 dot height. So we want to align the objects to the bottom of the stage. Image 2 dot x is equal to image 2 dot width. So this goes out of the stage. Image 2 dot y is equal to image 1 dot y. Let me add these to the display list. So this dot add child image 1 this dot add child image 2. We are done with the background layer class. Let's go back to the game background class. And here, let's add four layers that we require. Private, where BG layer 1 of type BG layer. I'll copy this and paste it three more times. 
and change these to 2, 3 and layer 4. As discussed earlier, we need the speed value. So, private var underscore speed of type number. I'll also initialize it to 0 and I'll create a getter and a setter method for this so I can change the speed of the background from outside the background class. Again, I'll create the same old event listener for added to stage. Now I have it in my clipboard so I'll just paste it to save time. Inside this function, I'll initialize all the layers we created starting from layer 1. So bg layer 1 is equal to new bg layer and I'll pass the layer number. Let me set bg layer 1 dot parallax is equal to 0 0.02 and this dot add child of bg layer 1. Now the value 0 0.02 tells the layer to animate at 1 50th of the speed of hero's flight. So that's really slow, just what we want. I'll copy this layer's code and paste it three more times for the other layers. Then change the object names to 2, 3 and 4. Also the layer numbers to 2, 3 and 4. For the parallax, let's start increasing the speed. So for layer 2, the speed will be 0 0.2, 10 times faster than the sky. Then for layer 3, which is the buildings, it's around twice as fast as layer 2, which is the hills. So 0 0.5 will do good. Finally, for the layer 4, the trees layer, it's going to be twice as fast as layer 3. So 1. So we are indicating that this layer actually moves at the same speed as that of Hero. But the difference is just that it is going to move in the opposite direction. The last thing to do to animate the seamless loop effect of the background elements is to create an enter frame event listener. So this dot add event listener event dot enter frame on enter frame. I'll create the method. I'll now decrement the x position of each layer. So bg layer 1 dot x minus equal to math dot seal and it'll be based on the underscore speed of the hero and bg layer 1's parallax value we assigned. Now while moving to the left, if it moves beyond the width of the stage to the left, we need to set it back to its origin. So if bg layer 1 dot x is less than minus stage dot stage width, bg layer 1 dot x is equal to 0. I'll copy these two lines and paste it for all the other layers. and change the object names to 2, 2, 2 and 2, 3, 3, 3 and 3, lastly 4, 4, 4 and layer 4. Awesome! We are officially done. So to test this out, all you need to do is get to the ingame.as and as soon as you initialize the background object, assign a speed to it. For example, bg dot speed is equal to say 10. Let's try and run it. This looks good. Now as the speed of the hero needs to change, all we need to do is reset the value of bg.speed to the current speed of the hero. And that's it. We are good to go. Before I finish, let me test it with one more value which is much faster. Say 50. And let's run this. 
Now as you can see, it gives you a feel as if Hero is moving much faster. Looks good. So we learned how to create a nice parallax effect for the background of our game. And in the next episode, I'll show you how to create different obstacles and make them fly in the opposite direction based on their own speeds. Until then, don't forget to send me your feedback, subscribe and keep coding. Thank you.